Okay. It looks like we are live. How is everyone today? Thank you so much for joining me on Twitter Periscope, YouTube, and Behance. My name is Jason Levine. Thank you so much for joining. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. And for today's brief live stream, um, coming to you from a new streaming setup, so hopefully it looks and sounds even a little better than before. <laughs> uh, I'm going to be talking to you very briefly about how to create cinematic text intros with a feature released not so long ago called Mask with Tasks, uh, Text. And real simply, this is something you see in movies all the time. In fact, the 1917 film that's out right now is doing a bit of this where they have some, some text and the text is masked out and it's sort of, you know, growing on screen and inside of those masks of the text, text, why can't I say that today? You're seeing the film inside of it. Uh, <laughs> I'm doing a fantastic job of describing what I'm trying to say. You get the idea, hopefully. If not, I'm gonna show it to you right now. So as always, thank you for joining wherever you are in the world. I can see we've got quite a few people on uh, Twitter Periscope today. Hey, hey, Desiree, Dr. Dar, Pentacool, Rob Hosford, thank you so much for joining. Hello, friends over on uh, YouTube. Phil Goodman, how's it going? Anshul Dewar, hello. All right, saying audio there, Phil. Hopefully you're hearing everything nice and clear. Des, is everything coming through nice and clear over there? I hope so. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, we're going to jump over to, uh, to my screen and we will get started. All right. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, here we go. Oh, maybe I should pop Premiere up here. All right, so as mentioned, the idea behind this is that you're going to be able to take text real simply, which you've created specifically in the Essential Graphics panel. Now, as I always like to say, there's lots of different ways that you can do this. Um, this is just one of the ways that you can do it. But what you'll see is that inside the Essential Graphics panel, up in the top left here, I have created a text layer. Now, if you've never done that before, just to show you, first of all, you'll typically want to be in the graphics workspace. You don't have to be. You can always um, in, um, open up the Essential Graphics panel by itself, which you'll find directly under the window menu here. And thank you, Des, for letting me know about the audio. Thank you. All right. So, um, and then, as you may have noticed, uh, since we added the Essential Graphics panel, it's as simple as typing text via the text tool right inside of the program monitor. So, and if you just click on this and hold, we have the traditional type tool, and then we even have a specific vertical type tool, um, which is great if you're creating, you know, particularly if you're creating video for social media and you want sort of you know, vertical layouts, or if your font and such or language um, lends itself to vertical text, much like a lot of uh, um, uh, Asian languages, Japanese, Chinese, you often see them in sort of vertical banners. Whatever you want, you can do it there too. So if I wanted to create another text layer, just to show you how this works, inside of the Essential Graphics panel, I can simply take my type tool, click wherever, and just begin typing, and you can see it types right on screen. And what it does is it adds a layer inside the Essential Graphics panel. We are, of course, working with layers here. Now, if you want more detail, uh, I'm just going to delete that layer, um, about Essential Graphics, you can actually go to my YouTube channel. Those of you watching on YouTube, you can find it in one of my playlists there. There's a whole series called How to Make Great Videos, and uh, I'll give you sort of all the details behind Essential Graphics. So, But it's really as simple as grabbing the text tool and typing on screen. It will automatically create the layer for you. It'll automatically do it inside the Essential Graphics panel, even if you don't have it open. So once you have that open, now what I'd like to do is I would like some Alaska video to play inside uh, of that text. Now to do that, you might think, okay, cool, well, I'll have video underneath it. And actually, if we scrub ahead here, you'll see that I've got some video. But the way that this particular technique works, remember I told you there's lots of different ways to do it, but this is the easiest and the fastest, is that you're actually going to add the video layer to the Essential Graphics panel, because much like Photoshop, you can import additional images, you can import additional files, you can import PSDs, and of course you can import actual video 
into Essential Graphics. And I want it to start here. So I'm gonna come up to the top of Essential Graphics and the button all the way to the right there is the new layer button. So let's go ahead and click on this where you'll see that you again have the option to add more text. You can add shapes. And in this case, we're going to choose from file. That's the one that we want. Okay, so let's go to from file. And the one that I'm looking for is, uh, I believe it is, oh, I just forgot the, hold on, I know it's it's in my list of files here, 6952. Okay, so I want this video to play. Actually, that one looks pretty good too. Uh, so let's go back over here from file. I'm gonna look for 6952, that's the one that I want. This video here, and click import, okay? And there's our video now inside of Essential Graphics. And it's above the text layer. That's kind of essential because when I click on this video layer, let's go ahead and uh, now we're going to choose mask with text. So you'll see that I moved the video below the text here. I grab the text and then I choose mask with text. And if I just play this back now, see the video playing inside of the text, okay? Let's do that one more time just so that you can see the whole process here, all right? So, come up to Essential Graphics, from file. We're gonna grab 6952, import, just like that. I don't even, do I even need to change the position of the layer? I'm not even sure that I do. Yeah, I do, okay. Let's put the video underneath the text select the text layer, choose mask with text, and that's it, all right? And you're there. Now incidentally, the sound that you're hearing is coming off of some sound effects, sound design that I added down below. So if I were to mute these, that's actually playing some of the native sound from the video, but I've got additional sound design going on here. Dorella, nice, okay, all right? Now again, to kind of simulate that very dramatic movie style uh, uh, text intro, this is where we probably want to do a little bit of animation. So for that, we're going to bounce over to the effects controls and select our um, essential graphics layer here, which is on V2. <clears throat> now, one thing that you will notice that's a little bit different um, since we've got text in here is that your motion command, which typically would just say motion here, now says vector motion, right? So um, in this case, let's say that we wanted the text to be sort of really large and then get smaller on screen. So and we're just going to keyframe that. So at the very beginning, I'm going to hold down my shift key so this will give me larger incremental movement here. Let's do something like this. Let's start it just about off screen. So that's 3780. And you'll see that it automatically creates a keyframe right here for me. And then maybe right at about nine seconds, that's where we want it to be, you know, 100% like that. Okay. And if you right click on these keyframes, for instance, this one here, let's make this continuous Bezier and let's do an ease in, a little bit of temporal interpolation here so that it kind of just slowly finds the stop position there. Now, that's quite a lot of animation in a short span of time, but let's see how that looks. Feels just like 1917. Hello. <laughs> All right, well, that's actually pretty cool the way that that worked. Kind of neat. And then maybe at that point, I might fade this whole thing out, which I could do with something as simple as a cross dissolve here. Although that, I don't know if that's going to, yeah, that'll, that'll kind of do it. That looks pretty good, actually. Let's move this back a little and see what we got here. Let's put this up to, let's see if I can play this at full. This is all 4K, so let's see how this is going to do. Nice, okay, and I might even shorten that dissolve. Let's 
Sweet. Okay. And it's that simple. Now again, you can animate this any way that you want. I see lots of hearts, that's great. But this is such a simple, easy technique. I almost want it, I, I almost want a little bit more of a, I wonder if I change that to just regular Bezier. Oh, it is on Bezier. Hmm, interesting. I, can I do auto Bezier? Let's see. I'm trying to see if I can just smooth out that, uh, that landing position. Eh, I don't know which one is better, really. <laughs> You're in danger of overusing this. I mean, you know, it's it's pretty cool. But you see it all the time now. So like a lot of things, it's, you know, it's timely and kind of hip, and you can you can choose to overuse it or whatever, you know, whatever you like. Now, we can reverse those keyframes as well. So let's say we want it to grow on screen. We're going to ease out of this. You, know, you see that a lot, too. Now, of course, we're going to black because there's nothing underneath it. So right before it gets to the edge there, yeah, see? Just the nature of these keyframes, we probably have to move this, move this out, something like that. You know, redo the animation a little bit. And I'd probably bring this in sooner because of that. Right, something like that. However you want, you know, it's up to you however you want to stylize the look of that. But it's really as simple as typing text, adding a video, adding an additional layer, changing the position, selecting your text, and just choosing mask with text, just like that, okay? And you'll see that you've also got the invert option here too, um, which of course will cover all the area outside of there minus the area inside the text, which you know could also be used for a different effect depending upon what's underneath. Um, so you have lots of other options and control here. Additionally, you know, you've got things like our little bounding box, which you wouldn't typically use with something like this, but it kind of gives you sort of a cool... It's, there's something cool about that. Again, I probably want to... This is being in 4K here. This is a vector. This is uh, not playing as lovely as I'd like. But you get the idea. Not that you'd want that background bounding box there, but that's what that is. It's also got an opacity control, so you could minimize that you know really just kind of start playing around with different looks um, right on screen okay and that is the mask with text feature short and sweet so with that let's go and see if we've got any questions in the chats all right f smittick what's up donald ping hello ihajo i'm doing very well thanks hey what's up rick on Behance, Anshul Dewar, hello, huge fan. Steve Hicks, is the video scaling too? So the video is scaling, and as you may have seen, so it's, you know, obviously the video isn't vector, so it's it's raster, so you're getting some pixelation there. Um, now, one of the things that you can do, depending on um, the uh, dimensions of your project, you know, if you know that you're going to be scaling something up only to scale it down, um, I'm trying to think if you could kind of fool it. Yeah, it gets a little interesting with adding the video in there. And that's why I say this is just one way to do it, because obviously if you want the video super crisp, there's other ways to mask text um, and create this effect without pixel, without kind of having that pixelated video underneath. Um, I'm going to do a separate stream on that one to show you some other techniques there. But yes, it is in fact scaling a video. So good question there. Uh, anything else over here? Hello, Ravi 3DFX and Cash by Studio. And Marcio from Portugal. Very nice. Very cool. Ant Pruitt. Oh, nice. The audio sounds really good. Thanks, Ant. Hey, good to see you, man. Daffy Doc, Edit Doctor, Luxemania, and Sergio. Great to see you. Okay. Uh, looks like that's all the questions we have. I'm not seeing any more coming in here. 
So a short and sweet one. Thank you so much for watching. Um, as always, it's great to be back on the stream here. Uh, tomorrow I will have my masterclass uh, on the Adobe Creative Cloud YouTube channel and specifically on Behance.live, Behance.net slash Adobe Live. So this is a new weekly series every Friday, 10.30 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, it's called the Video, Video and Motion Masterclass. And tomorrow is all about uh, fundamentals of starting and editing projects. So part of this is because it's on Behance, we're trying to introduce more video to our audiences on the Behance platform. So if you're already a video pro, this is gonna be a lot of repetition for you, probably don't need to tune in. Um, but if you're new to video and if you wanna get kind of uh, the feel of how to just set up a project and optimize Premiere Pro to begin editing your first cut of something to tell your story, that's what we're gonna be covering tomorrow. Um, really just fundamentals, everything from creating the project, template right from the beginning, you know, choosing settings, choosing file locations, um, setting playback resolutions using proxies if necessary, and we'll talk a bit about that. And then, you know, setting basic in and out points and moving clips around on the timeline and covering a couple of different tools. This is what tomorrow's masterclass is all about. So hope to see some of you then. If not, I will catch you next week back on Twitter, Periscope, Facebook, YouTube, and Behance, uh, Monday through Thursday. And as always, it's really great to see you all. So thanks so much for watching. The replays are available everywhere. So until next time, have a good one, and we'll see you then. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.